Hey guys, welcome back. So this is my Singer 107W1. It's a vintage 1950s industrial straight stitcher. It's got a vertical rear facing full rotary hook. It's got a timing belt, full gear driven. Uh, this thing is awesome. And it was not a machine that I was actually on the hunt for. Uh, it just kind of fell into my lap actually. Um, I originally was actually wanting this light and I contacted the seller and made him an offer, a pretty generous offer on the light uh, because I wanted it to go with my 114, uh, 103 and they kind of figured out that I was a vintage machine enthusiast and, and made me an offer too good to refuse on this machine. So I had to take it even though I, I uh, didn't really want it and I was really pleasantly surprised when I showed up and saw the condition that this thing is in. It is phenomenal. The table is totally flat. The legs look good. There's barely any pedal wear, uh, which is a pretty good indicator of use. The bed looks good. I mean, it's just overall really impressive. Um, but, of course, just I feel like every single vintage machine I get, it's some way out of time or out of adjustment. And I mean, I'm not necessarily surprised. These machines are old. This one's probably been around for, you know, over over 60 years uh, around there so anyway it was it was out and I figured I would do I'm making some adjustments and I thought I'd just do a quick video uh, nothing too crazy in depth but just show you some of these adjustments that may need to be made uh, if you pick one of these things up uh, it's actually a very simple system and I'm actually really impressed with with some of the engineering on this machine the hook mechanism is very much like the Bernina uh, the Bernina Favorite series, or their 217, um, in its operation, design, everything. Very similar, except it's got a much larger bobbin capacity. Um, the, the system here for doing the zigzag is uh, pretty straightforward. It's, it's kind of reminiscent to me of the Foff uh, 130 and 138s and the, the zigzag series that Foff did. Anyway, let me get into showing you how this thing to make some adjustments. So what we're going to be working on right now is adjusting the timing of the zigzag. So let me show you here from the front. Let's see if I can get to focus so you can see what's going on here. So you see the machine. I right now. Um, oh, you know what? I have a gear. Lo I loosen the gear. Should have checked that before. Let me, let me tighten the gear down in a random position so you can see maybe an exaggeration of what this adjustment looks like. Okay, so you see that there. You see how the timing, as this enters into the fabric, it's in the fabric, and then, then it's making it sweep towards the left, and then it enters onto the right, and then it moves further to the right uh, while it's in the fabric. This is your zigzag timing is out of line with the needle penetration timing, so that is an adjustment that needs to be made. To make that, it's, it's pretty straightforward actually if you uh, look at the internals on the machine. So basically this entire mechanism here, it's a shaft that runs through and it goes to the back, to right here. Um, and this whole, everything inside here just controls the throw of this Pitman arm here uh, that controls the zigzag. The, the, the only way that it's tied to the main shaft is through this single gear here. So you can actually adjust this gear to adjust the throw of that timing. Now, <clears throat> mine was seized up, and yours probably will be too. That's just what happens. I mean, this stuff over time with the oil and everything. So the process for that is, to, to release that, is you want to go in right to the left of the shaft here, and you're going to want to clean that off with denatured alcohol as best as you can, all of this. Clean off all of that shaft, almost the width of this entire gear here, okay? Then you're going to loosen and you remove these set screws. There's two of them. There's one and there's the other. And you're going to drop maybe some um, some liquid wrench down in there as well as on the sides and, uh, and, and loosen that gear up. Now, I waited, I waited. You know, you can try to grab these things with pliers, but you don't want to risk marring the teeth on these gears. And you don't want to damage anything. So the best way I've found, and this is assuming you're comfortable enough retiming it because once you knock this thing out, it's totally out of adjustment. <clears throat> I will just take like a little rod. This is a piece of bar stock here. And I will just slightly tap 
uh, on this gear to try to shift the gear from here over to the left. You'll have a much easier time moving the gear going in this direction than you will rotating it on the shaft. It's just too difficult that way. It's going to be too seized up. You're going to mar this gear. Don't risk it. So knock it off, the sh knock it to the left of the shaft. You don't have to worry about damaging these gears. This sh lower shaft down here will move as this gear moves along. So don't worry about it. Okay. Before you do that, though, I probably should mention, screw this all the way and tighten it down so that your machine's set on the widest zigzag possible. So I think this is reverse thread, so you, you turn it all the way. Uh, turn all the way in so it's not the widest stitch. Then knock the gear out of place. Okay, and you'll see this one moves freely. Once you knock it out of place here, this thing is going to be filthy where the gear used to be. You need to rotate the machine around and clear with, clean it out with denatured alcohol. And then when you're done, you'll see that this gear, get my finger out of the way, this gear now moves freely. And if, even if I turn the knob here, you'll see that this gear move around. So that's exactly what you want. You can see I could spin this, and it just spins around it's freely, and then this gear moves back and forth, no problem. Okay, now for the adjustment. What you're going to want to do here is, is uh, there we go, focus. You're going to want to see, you know, you, you want your needle to be in the lowest bottom position, okay? Now, let me go back here. So once that's loose, once that's loose, you're going to come back and you're going to tighten this gear down to approximately the same position that it, that it was before. So let me tighten it down. Just one screw is fine. Now, so now that I've tightened it down, you can see this thing is way, way out of adjustment. And you can look at this arm here and see this arm, this arm here, moves the needle bar back and forth. So what we're trying to do is sync up this furthest left motion at its maximum with the penetration of the needle at its maximum. So, what I would do, well, what I did was I looked at this needle throw here, and you want to capture it at the furthest left point. So, rock it back and forth, and I just took a spring clamp, took the tab off the front, and I used this as a stop. So, it will allow me, so as I move across, you can see it hits, and I want to I want to make sure that I can visually see. Now I'll turn on a little headlamp that I have here, so I can see. I want it to touch, and there it is. So that so that now creates a reference for me to know where the furthest to the left this is. Now I want to sync this up. So what I'm going to do now is once I've set that stop, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to loosen that screw. Okay, I'm going to rotate it around. Which one did I tighten? There, so I'm going to loosen it. So now, this thing can move freely. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to go maximum penetration to the bottom dead center of the needle throw. There it is. And just rock back and forth until you visually see where that is. You should be able to see it. You, if you're having trouble seeing it on the needle, then you can look right here at this block. Sorry, I think the light was throwing it off. So just look and see. That that's where you want to be. And you want your arm here. Now I'm gonna go back to my arm and check this out. You can rotate this around. And so what you're gonna do now is you turn the screw here, and you can see as I turn this knob, you see how this is moving? and the gear is not engaged. So you're going to turn it all the way until it goes to the left, until it's its furthest most position. Okay, now it's in its furthest most position. The needle is in its furthest depth. You're going to move the needle clamp, or the spring clamp, across and just kind of clamp that in place. Now, this shaft is locked in place. This shaft is, main shaft is not going to move. 
Now you can s slide this gear and it will rotate in on the shaft into position. Now you want to line it up back to where it'll, it's fine anywhere across here, but I'm going to put it back. You know, if you get a little bit to the left, or to the right, that's okay. But I want to have, um, I want to line the gear up back to where it was roughly uh, when I had loosened it, which is right there. Uh, right there, okay? So now all I do is everything's in place. I'm just going to tighten down that one screw. I'm going to tighten down, so snug it up, come back to my spring clamp, take the spring clamp off, rotate this around now very lightly, and tighten the other screw. Sorry I have the motor running. The lamp is wired in hardwired into the motor right now, so in order for the light to be on, the motor has to be on. Hopefully that's not too distracting, but okay. So now these are tightened down. Now come, let's come back here and take a look. Get to focus. There we go. So you're at your peak. It's in the center. You penetrate. And now I still, I, no, I made the adjustments and I've looked through the machine. I don't think it's going to get any better than this. You could see there's Still, so I'm in the fabric, it's coming up, and you can see how it moves a little bit. Now, I've tested it on a piece of cardboard, and it looks pretty good. But I think that this is going to be the best that you're going to get. I think this is just how it was adjusted and, and made. Now, one more thing I'll throw in here is, you see how this is in perfect center? with it. Uh, the needle here is perfectly centered in the in the throw of the needle plate. To make the adjustment, if yours is out of whack, you loosen. Well, you need to loosen this screw right back here. You loosen that, and then you adjust it. This is like a lobe. It's on an eccentric, and so you you're gonna rock. Sorry, I'm trying to focus here. Focus. No. Uh, and you're gonna turn this, and it will change the. Uh, position of the of the throw of the needle so it'll either move it to the left or move it to the right you want to adjust it so it's aligned perfectly to the center so hopefully that helps some of you guys there are a couple other adjustments made that can be made in here maybe I'll go into them for example here you see this little screw uh, there's two of them there's a larger one and you can uh, limit the width of the adjustment of this front dial for the stitch width with this by rotating it counterclockwise and this